We have seen big M method that we may use to solve linear programming problem um, that has the constraint of greater than or equal to or equality constraints. But big M is not the only method. In this video, I'm going to introduce another method that is called two-phase simplex. Now, the reason why there are people proposing this uh, method is because um, if you're using the big M method, sometimes there's a difficulty to determine how large the M should be. And when you're using a computer software, of course, you cannot just write down the character M, right? You need to specify a number and sometimes it's difficult to determine how large M should be. So two-phase simplex method overcome that um, this advantage of the big M method because here you do not need to specify something like big M, uh, how big M should be, like if you have to do if you're using the big M method. So let's start and see how two phase simplex method works. The first few steps in the two simplex method is exactly the same with the big M method. So first you check if there's any value on the right hand side that is negative. If yes, then you need to transform that um, constraint by multiplying it with minus one. So this is an example again, but if we use the BEFCO example, this is not the case. So we can just uh, do nothing in this step. Okay, because all the right hand side values are positive. So we do nothing regarding to step one. And then we see that, okay, we have a uh, constraint that is in the equality sign. We have also a constraint that has the sign of greater than or equal to. And then the second step is still the same. We convert um, the model into standard form by adding select variables, uh, subtract by excess variable. And then the step three, we add an artificial variable where it is necessary. So for row two, we add artificial variable. For row three, we also add artificial variable. So up to step three, everything is still exactly the same with the big M method. And you should follow all the steps closely step by step to ensure that you perform this method correctly. Now the difference with big M starts on step four. So this is the step four for the two phase method. It says that for now, ignore the original LP's objective function. I should stop here and emphasize this once more. So in the step four of the two phase method, we have to ignore the original LP's objective function. Ignore here means you forget, you delete it from your memory, so you just throw the original LP's objective function away at this moment. So ignore the original LP's objective function. I really cannot emphasize this more strongly, you know. I really have to tell you that you have to ignore the original LP's objective function at this step. Okay, so you ignore the original LP's objective function and then instead you use phase one objective function, which is always minimization. Okay, so regardless of your original objective function, whether it is maximization or minimization, on phase one, you always use minimization. So the objective function of phase one looks like this. Minimize W primes equals to the sum of all artificial variables that you have in your model. So going back to our BEFCO example, we have A2 and A3 as our artificial variables. So the phase one objective function for our problem or our example is minimize W prime equals A2 plus A3. So this is the phase one objective function. So this is the model that you've seen before after we replace the objective function with phase one objective function. It looks like this. Let's try to put this on a table to see it um, in a clearer way. So if you look at this table, you should 
have known by now that this is not in a canonical form and then we don't have basic variables for these two rows. So what we need to do is that we need to transform the column A to A3 such that they would be in a canonical form. And then as usual, the way we do that is that using the old row zero plus one times second row plus one time the third row. So plus one time row two plus one time row three, you obtain the row, the new row zero. So this is the new row zero and then you write it down here. So the table on the bottom part is already a BFS because we have a basic variable for each of the row. And then uh, you can see that this is also already in a canonical form. So we're good. We've got an initial BFS. Once you've got the initial BFS, like on the table that we've seen on a previous slide, or the table that you see at this moment, you can proceed as usual um, using the rules in the simplex algorithm. Because the phase one is always about minimization, so you can see that this table is not optimal yet. X2 becomes the entering variable because it has the most positive coefficient. You perform ratio tests and pick the smallest. Here's the pivot position. You perform error such that now the column X2 has uh, the value 1 in the pivot position and 0 in all other position. Again, you check again because phase 1 is a minimization, so this table is still not optimal. The variable X1 is the most positive in row 0, so it becomes entering variable. You do a ratio test, pick the smallest, and then um, this is the pivot here. Do error or elementary row operation to make the X1 column becomes 1 at the pivot position and then 0 in the other positions. So here on the last table, you see that for the minimization problem, this is already optimal because you don't have any positive coefficient anymore in the row 0. So the phase 1 has reached optimality. So phase 1, uh, we have got the optimal table with the value of w prime equals 0 here. And then you also can see that there is no artificial variable in the optimal phase 1 basis. Basis means the set of basic variables. You see that the basic variables are s1, x2, and x1. We do not have any artificial variables. So this was the optimal phase one table that we've seen in our example. This is called the case two because the w prime equals zero and then we do not have any artificial variable as a basic variable. And then when we have case two, we may go on to phase two. Because this is called case two, of course, there are other cases. For example, we have case one in which the W prime is greater than zero. So strictly greater than zero. In this case, it means that the linear programming model is infeasible. We do not need to continue because we know that this linear programming is infeasible. Now, case three is that when we have w prime equals zero, but then there is at least one artificial variable as the basic variable. When we have this kind of case, we may go on to phase two, but we need to do something else. So at this moment, let's talk about case two first. We will talk about case one and case three later. Going back to our example, this is the optimal table for phase one uh, in that example. This optimal table falls into case two. Now, first we notice that the basic variables in the optimal BFS are S1, X2, and X1. Okay, and then according to the previous slide, when we have case two, we can just continue to phase two. 
In phase two, these are the things that you need to do. First, we will drop all artificial variables columns. So we will drop uh, A2 and A3. Okay, by dropping the columns means that we can just delete those columns and ignore them uh, in the next steps. And then for row zero, we use the original objective function. So this is the original objective function, and then we plug it back um, to the problem. Remember that before we ignore the original objective function, now we plug the original objective function back into the problem. So this is the original objective function in the form of row zero. So minus two x1 minus three x2. Okay, again, this is become, uh, they both become minus because this is the row zero form. We move everything to the left hand side. That's why it becomes minus two x1 minus two x2. Okay, but this is the original objective function. Now for the other rows, we simply copy and paste all the rows from the optimals table of phase one. So you see that these three rows, they are exactly the same with these three rows from the um, optimal table of phase one. Now, what you need to do is that you need to make sure that after you uh, combine the objective function from the original problem and the other rows from the optimal table of phase one, now you need to make sure that the basic variable are still the same with the phase one optimal table. It means that the basic variable should be S1, X2, and X1. So after we combine the objective function using the original and all the other rows from phase one optimal table, the table looks like this. What we need to do now is that we need to make sure that this basic variable from the optimal phase one, they should become the basic variable again. It means that we need to make these two columns become canonical form. So become like this on the uh, table on the bottom. As usual, we do this using arrow, elementary row operation. So this row, phase two, row zero, plus three times uh, the second row, plus two times row three, we obtain the new row zero. That looks like this. And then we plug in here. For the case of minimization, the table on the bottom is already optimal because all coefficients in row zero, they are already uh, zero or negative. You don't see any positive coefficients. So for the minimization problem, this table is already optimal. Now, after you see how two-phase simplex method works, let me check your understanding with several questions. So for the first questions, out of these four functions, which objective function makes sense for the phase one in two-phase simplex method? I will give you the answer after the pause on the video. The answer is C. Uh, the option A does not make sense because it says maximization. Remember that for phase one in two-phase method, the objective is always minimize. And then for B, it doesn't make sense because uh, the signs are negative. Negative A1, negative A3, negative A4. It doesn't make sense because um, in phase one, the objective is always to minimize the sum of all artificial variables. So the sign must be positive. And then option D is also um, does not making any sense because um, the variables are x1 and x2. Usually we will denote the artificial variables with A and 
uh, we use x as the decision variable for the original problem. So here, assuming x1 and x2 are the decision variable for the original problem, it doesn't make sense because in phase one, we must ignore the original objective function, right? So the only answer that is um, making any sense is option C. Now here's the second question. The objective function of phase two and then you select one statement that completes that sentence correctly. The correct answer is D because uh, in phase two, we will use the original objective function again. While in phase one, remember that we always use the objective function of minimizing the sum of all artificial variables. Okay, so that's the end of this video. In the next one, I'm going to talk about two-phase uh, method for case one and case three. So see you on the next one. Thank you.